So one night after Bancroft came out on, was it? He came out on the uh, what show was it? Was it Today Tonight a Current Affair? I don't, I don't even know. You know when oh the Gilchrist interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, whatever that was on. One night after that, I actually saw him walking around at work at Bunnings, and I swear to God, like I have nothing against Bancroft. There's no, there's no malice, but I just, I just kept thinking like, don't go up to him and tell him where sandpaper is. Don't go up and tell him where sandpaper is. <laughs> He was walking towards me and I was like, I'm going to say it. I'm going to get fired. <laughs> I probably would have definitely been fired if I'd... Do you reckon Creed Australia have that kind of pull? Do you reckon... I think it would be like Bancroft would have a go at me if I... <laughs> if I and then he would call the manager and get me fired. I reckon that, that would actually be a viral effect. Okay. What aisle is the sandpaper in? On oh, 19. Oh, 19. Yeah. And where do you work actually? Which Bunnings? Just in case I'm not fans want to come in I'm and autograph. I'm not going to no. say that. No. Um, okay. I've already been recognised once. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and not for the podcast weird flex but okay <laughs> um, have you speaking of cricket have you been keeping up with like the test series and the big bash and yeah stuff? it's hard to not be I guess I mean I remember Joyce even saying that when it throughout the year like oh, I don't care about cricket then it comes to cricket season and it's just like it takes over your entire life I'm, <laughs> I'm such a bandwagon fan like I think a lot of Australians are yeah, yeah. we are I, we are as a supporting nationality of this cricket team, we are the worst. People mm. give people shit for, like the English, for being bad sports, about, and, and India as well. But Australia is so bad for eating their own. Yes, yeah, so that's, yeah. Including myself, because like, I don't care. Like, with, with the Eagles and stuff, I pride myself on being a good supporter of support them all the time. Yep. But the Australian cricket team, I just don't care. So, yeah. Like, oh, I've, yeah. yeah, I've ridden everyone off in that team at least like three times <laughs> in this test season. It's like, drag him. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with Mish Marsh as well. Like when he's playing for the Scorchers, I'm like, yes, I love this guy. He's, he's, like, yeah, he's yeah. our best player. And then he plays yeah. for Australia. Get him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. been a good test series. Do you yeah, think? actually, it's been a fantastic test series. Like, um, it's good to see, well, India, best team in the world. They're rated number one. And it's good to see them put up like a, oh, like, they put up a very good fight in Australia. Yeah. Well, they're beating us. They're going to win the series. I mean, they're, I think we're about three or four for less than 100, chasing 400. So it's basically a given to lose. This test, and they got 2-1 in the series. So then they can't lose the trophy, basically. Yeah. So it could be a very monumental... The fir- India's first win test series win in Australia. It could be... Yeah. Yeah, on Australian incredible. soil, wasn't it? Yeah. Because so they, yeah, they've beaten us over there, I swear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. yeah. Um, but do you think do you think the Aussies have put up a good fight, considering the turmoil that's happened since South Africa? Mm, what do you think? Do you think we're about up to expectations? Because it, It's hard, isn't it? I think, I mean, it's really in a... Uh, I guess post that world that there's if all the creative Australia executives are either leaving or being sacked or in the process of being sacked uh, they're bringing in new players they're testing out random players like Finch and that kind of thing mm. and so it's hard to take a lot from this series because it's such in a yeah a, like a transitional phase of Australian cricket um, the Perth win I think was a fantastic I mean that's Tim Payne's first win and uh, yeah, yeah first right. result in X amount of test matches um, yeah but I don't know. Perth is a good win, but I think this this test and this series are showing the real issues um, that we have in terms of actual performing batsmen mm. in, the, in the country. And that's there's a lot of criticism on Cricket Australia at the moment um, about that and how, for example, now with the um, the Shield, the the big bashes on, so there's no form that you can be picked um, long like long, yeah, longer format, longer format, longer yeah, longer form, yeah, yeah. You can pick these players from so. And that's apparently, yeah, Creed Australia's kind of decision. So, yeah, because they've elongated the um, the Big Bash now to 14-game season. So, mm. the Shield ended, what, November? Yeah. Oh, I think early December. Okay, early December. Early December. And then comes back in February. Yeah, right? I think yeah, mid, and mid to late February. Yeah, that's, think, yeah. that's a bit late to be picking so, players on. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So, it's it's a doozy, you know, and then who knows if that'll change with different executives and um, mm. who knows. I think the way it used to be was that the one day se- uh, one day season in in Australia would be run alongside the Sheffield Shield, so both would go for the whole summer. Ah, I'm pretty sure. So you had that that whole body work. now. Now yeah. like it's the one day series is like a carnival almost. Where yeah, yeah, they, it is. Oh yeah, yeah, they when have it like a, a few it? weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. and then the it. Sheffield Shield is I it's, think still the same length. It's just it's, not designed to to get any kind of like. Oh, for players to build up any kind of form, mm. it's just thrown all over the place, and it's yeah, as it, as you can, it's showing, it's not creating test quality batsmen. Do you think that's more to blame 
uh, with, as compared to um, the selectors because the selectors cop a lot of heat for picking favourites not yeah. picking on form and stuff like that Do you, what, what do you think is a bigger issue the fact that these guys aren't building form or do you think the selectors cop most of the problem I think I mean there was a good article by Ed Cowan that came out recently um, and he was talking about how players don't really know what they have to do there's no mm. is it intangibles tangibles that they have to do to get picked I mean if they put up lots of runs in the Sheffield Shield that's fine but they might not fit into the good bloke criteria whatever they decide the selectors decide so that's another another issue for players not actually knowing how to get in the team yeah. the Maxwell example so uh, I feel sorry for the bastard because he um, yeah he what happened he got taken over to South Africa he flew all the way over to South Africa to be 12th man mm. and then they told him not to play I think a few Sheffield Shield matches yeah, I think to prepare yeah. for Pakistan and then didn't he pick him didn't up. get picked, yeah. yeah. And so it's it's like how it's the man management all over the place, yeah. yeah. And the fact that it's a dude, so that's I think the selectors that side of it's a doozy. And the fact that they have Cricket Australia has such control over the Sheffield Shield where they can go player management, they can pick and choose like lineups for the Sheffield Shield and where players are batting, and like things like yeah, playing Stark and Coford, I think. Like in one of the recent ones, they played him for half a match and then dragged him basically. Mm. Or said you can only bowl four or five overs. It's yeah, crazy. But again, I mean that that management, the high performance kind of thing, also comes across. I'm ranting now, but it comes across in football as well. Because there's an article, um, it was in the Post actually, which I think is the Mount Lawley. Um, it's the North Perth newspaper about. Remember um, the fantastic? I can't remember the guy's name. It's a goal kicker from the Waffle, and the Eagles have been bringing him in every now and then. To a goal kicker, as in as forward. In, yeah, it was a forward from uh, Archie. I can't remember his name, unfortunately. I should have looked into this more. But um, they brought him in to work with Jake Waterman on his kicking okay. skills. And then right. um, the, the coach told him that look, Jake Waterman can only take X amount of shots yeah. in an hour. And he said, well, what's the point of me even being here if you can take yeah. eight kicks at goal in an hour because the high-performance manager's... Same do this. So I think Brendan Vavola said on the radio once after he retired that he used to go have secret goal kicking sessions because the right. um, they, apparently there's a, always a constant battle between like the physios and the sports scientists and the and the coaching staff at the club yeah. um, because they obviously got conflicting interests. But yeah, Fev was limited by the amount of shots he could have at training, so he would actually go and have his own secret session. That's, and, yeah, I mean, kick 99 goals in a season, so he, maybe he had the right sure. idea. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, odd stuff, but. Uh, yeah. I watched a good interview uh, just on the lunch break, actually, in the test cricket, where Brad Hodge said, um, they were, like, I think it was uh, Hamish McLaughlin was asking him, like, oh, do you think you should have played more tests? And he goes, mm. well, I guess averaging 56 wasn't good enough for him, but perhaps if I played today and averaged 25 and 60 with the ball, then I'd, Is that probably, right? <laughs> I'd probably get a game. Like, <laughs> like Lava Shane averages, like, 33 this year, and yeah, okay. even less, and then 59 with the ball, and then what's Mitch Marsh? First five half. Like, fired. It's hard. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean that's... The players are doing the best they can, though, oh, I guess, sure. at the end of the day. So I, yeah. do feel, I do feel sorry for him. You can't just buddy. And booing Mitch Marsh, I mean, it's not his fault he gets buddy picked at the end of the day. He's, he's yeah. literally just doing the best he bloody can. If he's not up to it, then he's not up to it. Oh, I 100% means. agree with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, I think a lot of heat, if we lose this test series, and if we lose it 3 1, I think a lot of heat will come onto Cricket Australia um, about upholding Warner and Smith's bans mm. until next year because mm. they that came up again and they had like an appeal process I think a month or two ago about it if they should cut it short and Cricket Australia yeah upheld it but I think the Australian fans I don't think we used to like not being competitive yeah. competitive and I think maybe the whole virtue signalling of it where it's like oh bugger they cheated never bring it back we're so these people were so going to get swayed to oh shit we're not winning anymore yeah. <laughs> let's Let's bring them back as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, you can't. You can't bring. Well, I personally don't think you should shorten the bands just because we're losing. No, like, I know. Yeah, I know. You, but I think more people's opinions would be like, um, yeah, it, it'd be less of a big deal. Um, ball tampering. I think the yeah. longer the longer it goes, and the worse and worse. Yeah, yeah it, maybe if we'd foreseen how bad the team would go into our well, yeah, then people would have just, been. Yeah, again, Creed Australia. I think it's been a pretty horrible place for the last 10 years yeah yeah I think. the bands and like we don't need to go into it again but the bands in the first instance were pretty excessive pretty excessive yeah definitely um, but yeah anyway yeah no, good good terms do you watch <laughs> as much BBL as test cricket or are you, like, are you kind of just watching everything or? yeah I mean this time of the year it's just like watching just sports sports on you got buddy cricket galore which is fantastic I think last year they had cricket on every single night for yeah was it like two months or something yeah I don't yeah. know if it's the same this year but it could be 
could be similar, but it's it's great. I mean, I try and watch as much as I can. I mean, watch Hobart win last night in uh, against Sydney Thunder. I think it was in Beverly Even that was a great match. It was amazing. a great chase. Yeah, yeah. massive choke by Sam's. I think was it twenty six <laughs> or twenty five. Nothing pisses me off though. more than it happens quite often when bowlers are trying to bowl Yorkers at the death and they mm. buy, bowl um, over the waist no balls full tosses. Yeah, and they're free oh hit my as God. well. It's yeah. I really hate Hopefully. it. As a bowler, like, I, I can't stand watching it. I, like, <laughs> I really get angry. It's just, they needed 26 or 27 off two overs, yeah. and then they needed, like, they eight got, or something. Yeah, they, yeah. And they bowled like another, so. um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no waste ball. Time, waste yeah. no ball, yeah. That's but right. no, I do try and watch as much BBL as I can. Um, again, I'm pretty bandwagon on that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> me too, me too. I, yeah, I didn't start watching it until I won the game. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, you know, I might start. Yeah. yeah. Now I've got the full kit. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, um, I think the first per- Scorchers game wasn't on free to air. Well, it wasn't on seven. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah did, that's true, actually. There was it. one. Yeah. yeah. That's another um, debate selling rights to cricket. Because to... that's, what yeah. that's what it's like in the, in the UK. All the, all the matches are on Sky, which you have yeah. to pay to. Yeah, pay see, but uh, we're very lucky we don't have that. I hope it doesn't go that way. Yeah, which it probably will eventually. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, Seven's got such a good position at the moment. They've got the football and the cricket. Yeah, of course, that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, that is incredible. What's Channel Nine got? <laughs> I think Channel Seven sold them the tennis. The Australian oh, Open. Oh god. Which you know, I'm I think sure it does get viewers. It. it does get viewers, okay. but it's not cricket and football. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I'm very biased in my opinion there. I'm like, oh, tennis, but like, <laughs> I know a lot of people watch, watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it does exist. Do you think? Is there any part of you? I say this because this is how I feel. Any part of me? And where's, where's this going? <laughs> is there any part of you? That's itchy. Or red? Oh. Anyway, continue. Red? <laughs> um, I was going to say, is there any part of you that kind of wishes the um, Australian, uh, or Cricket Australia, whoever formed the BBL, kind of put more thought into the branding of it? Because <laughs> cause at the time, it was a bit of a Mickey Mouse competition. We had Stu McGill, Shane Warne, Ricky Ponting, yeah. all these veterans playing with a bunch of no-name yep. domestic players and that. Um, so it was it was kind of like let's see how it goes for a couple of years and but now I what it's BBL eight and yeah. like I don't know I just look at the teams like the Sydney Sixers dressed in Sixers. fluorescent pink and I'm like yeah I can, you can put a little bit more thought into it you compare it to like football and in the EPL where they've got like actual pride in the emblem and and, That's true. and stuff like that whereas the, I wonder I think how... the Scorchers is one of the coolest names and that's Scorchers saying something cool, yeah. because the, yeah that's <laughs> the mascot's a flipping dragon that yeah. awesome. like. <laughs> What is this Mickey Mouse? Like? Scorchers but, people. But like, do you know what it, they're called in the UK? Because they originated the T20 format. Do they just, do they, I'm not sure if they're, I'm not sure if their competition is quite, still quite big, but I don't know if they mm. go by the county names or um, whatever. I think they is. did at one point. Hmm. I think they did originally. That's a good question, actually. I didn't, I haven't looked at that. Um, yeah. Interesting, but I, think I mean, you're the right. Indian Premier League, like, those are the worst names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love how there's like a Kings and a Super Kings. <laughs> Wait, wait, I see what they're called. I'm going to one-up that. <laughs> super, super mega kings. And then going. there's royals and then there's the royal challenges. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah pretty unimaginative. Yeah. Well, we can segue, we can segue this into AFLX with the new team names. True, true. The Someone... Dead, Deadly. Yeah, I think it's run by a team. One, which of, is... one of our listeners sorry, has asked us about Bruce from the Discord chat. Yep. Um, if you... If you're listening to this and you're not on our Discord chat, you should um, follow the link in the description because there's at least a... three people on there. Uh, there's no, there's actually a, there's there's a few more than that. that. So. Not including you. No, but... I'm not on it. But... <laughs> um, so. Bruce is asking what our thoughts are on AFLX and the reformatting of the league. So we we don't we won't see the Eagles with Dockers, Collingwood representing themselves. It'll be what mm. four teams with four captains. Who are the captains against? It's Fife, Betts, Dangerfield, and I'm spacing on the last one. Oh, Jack Rewald. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah and they're all, one. like, what, called, what are the names? Deadly. Oh, like, Deadly is the only one I can remember. Oh, the other one's... Brute. Is that one? <laughs> I feel like that's, like... That's, yeah, okay. saying, like, like, the Brute's the same. Like, the danger field's the same. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. I what, think... What is it about Australians and coming up with, like, cool things? Like, they just ruin it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's marketing, man, isn't it? It's yeah. marketing departments think This is what the kids want. Yeah. I don't know. That's exactly who they're marketing to, though, with AFLX. It's to, it's, it's to compete it's, against the other growing it's sports. It's frustrating right? because it's obviously... We got the new Marvel Stadium now, mm. Eddie had, and so now you just bring like the way that was advertised was like, look at these, you know, superheroes True. or whatever, which is you know pretty embarrassing for a, a 
I mean, Marvel Stadium is embarrassing. Oh, I don't know. It's just stadium rights. <laughs> stadium names, yeah, whatever. But yeah, yeah. it's going to be, I don't know. I'm just pretending it's not the superheroes. I'm just like, it's just called Marvel Stadium. It doesn't have any other meaning. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But like, it's seeing as it's already influenced, or well not, I yeah, mean, yeah. influenced the marketing of AFLX, I mean, mm. I'm really worried about <laughs> where this game's going to go. <laughs> Do you think it's an improvement on previous year's AFO? Yeah, though? that's a good question. Because um, that wasn't that engaging last year. That's true. Yeah, it did seem just like, oh, I don't know, watching, yeah, going down to the footy at Bay Leeville over or what. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I, I basically watched it to see the like Eagles under 23s yep. and well, even Freos. And like most of the teams had um, pretty young squads. Mm-hmm. But this time, if there's going to be four teams, it sounds like they're going to be quite star-studded. Yeah, and that's true. Seeing yeah. this is a unique time to see players who don't normally play together play together. You that's I mean? true. I mean, that's so, very unique. It's, it's kind of no, well, not state of origin, but it's halfway between, I guess, isn't it? It's where you're actually mixing mm-hmm. these teams up completely. Um, I don't know. Do you th- will it get more people watching? Maybe. I guess so. But probably not. But will it be more engaging to the kids? Maybe. The, yeah. To maybe see not. all the stars. <laughs> probably is. Yeah. I probably will be. To be honest, I reckon. I reckon it's slightly more engaging. Because yeah. I, I used to love the International Rules series and I yep. don't care for it anymore. But when I was a kid, I really liked, liked to see like all the best players. That's true. Close that to is, best players, yeah, so. that is fantastic, isn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, mm. I say we give it a chance because... Definitely. Fundamentally, though, I think like the actual game of AFLX wasn't very good. Yeah. Because it kind of just took away all the contested side of it and it was almost like playing mm. touch AFL. Um, so it's true. It's in, so it's uh, interesting if you're getting these big name players. Is are they? Is their prerogative to bash and crash into each other? Oh, not bash. It's not the biggest contested yeah, game. But like, if you're having yeah. these best players, is it? I don't know. Will is it worth? It was very hands off last year. But I mean, if with with mainly preseason games, you don't see senior players like important structural players to your teams playing massive minutes mm. in the end it's a lot of just throwing the kids to it. what happens if Dangerfield doesn't need yeah. in this league because they've thrown them together it's mm. going to be bloody mayhem yeah but I don't know have they inter- have they in um, what's the word? they're all the uh, the other preseason matches where you can actually because if they've got four big teams they're not going to have the young players under 23s have they mm. increased the amount of other games do we know like JLT yeah I don't think so okay I think it'll be like Two JLT games plus AFLX. I think it's the standard right. format. Yeah, interesting. Mm. It's interesting. We'll wait and see. Like I, as I said, like I had pretty um, uh, mild impressions of the last AFLX. Mm. I don't know if that's an expression, but um, <laughs> mild impressions. <laughs> but I mean, like I just it was like, yeah, hey, okay. I just it's good to see like yeah. really Rioli for the first time. That's yeah, um, exactly. Patrick but. Shirley. Yeah, That's yeah, and they played really well, and that was that was the best part of it for me. But then yeah. when we, the Eagles weren't playing, I wasn't that interested. So yeah, maybe, maybe this could be more condensed, more interesting version. Yeah, no, we, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it's sports, so it will be watched. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll watch it. True, so. and like it'll come after like months of not having watched football, so yeah. we're gonna absolutely gonna, eat it yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll be six podcasts a week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what announced. I learned from t- yeah, oh yeah, the that's thirty a, minute Eagles. That's a good, out, oh, good title for a video good. though. What I learned from the AFLX that will get so many <laughs> so many views. It's great clickbait. I'm thinking like words. a YouTuber now. Yeah, good keywords. CPM. Yeah. No. CPM. <laughs> there you go. So this is the New Year's podcast, Louis. Yep. Um, we did one last year and it went pretty well. I think nobody watched the channel back then and it got like four hundred views and mm. um, it's highly offensive as well. There's a lot of <laughs> offensive words in there. Um, <laughs> But True. one year on, here we are. It's just you and me, obviously, this time. Yep. Um, looking back at 2018 first. The others are in jail. Well, the others are in jail, yeah. For what they said on the podcast. Yeah. Um, 2018, big year. Huge year. Yeah. We, uh, mm. Big year for the channel. Yep. And uh, you joined the channel and then went on an eight-month yeah, holiday. Off, yeah. to, uh, <laughs> through the entire FL season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, but talking footy, like you obviously caught a little bit of footy um, yeah. over there. Yep. And you followed it um, through our like, true footy chat as well. Yeah. Did you have any... This is an obvious question because we're both Eagles fans. But did you have any like big highlights or lowlights throughout the year? I feel oh, like that's just, that's I'm just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> teeing you up for this. But. I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, dumb sheets go, obviously. Which but, one? Which one was that? 
Uh, round 13, I think it was, <laughs> against Geelong. He actually did kick a few good goals this year, I thought. He's not bad for that, from the pocket on his, on yeah. his left. Even the yeah. opposite one, he usually kicks a few. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Besides the grand final, I think... I mean, it was a great year to be an Eagles supporter, I think. It was a pretty rollercoaster year. But, yeah. I mean, McGovern kicking that goal after Siren. Mm. Fantastic. I remember being in work in, um, in Scotland. or pretending to work because I had the game there. <laughs> And I was, it was a rehearsal or something for the show, and I just remembered watching him kick this goal and just screaming. Ah! Yeah, I think. Like, ah! <laughs> You're right, Luke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because the, the actual people who were doing the rehearsal were um, Australian blokes from, oh, from Melbourne. Yeah, right. So they sang the West Coast Eagles theme song afterwards, and it was <laughs> quite cute. Yeah. That, that was it. So McGovern kicking that, and then, I mean, even that, again, I was watching that Jetta when Jetta snapped that goal against Collingwood oh, yeah, in the huge. first yeah. final. I was on a bus in Budapest, I think, yeah. streaming it. And again, that was just fist pump screaming. <laughs> just like, it was, yeah. What kind of fist pump screaming? <laughs> the double barrel. All right, all right. Okay, I was, my mind went somewhere else. <laughs> those, I mean, those, I don't know, it's been a fantastic season. Um, I just, I just remember being pure elation. And mm. Melbourne getting absolutely smashed in Perth. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, there's, I don't think much is better from the Eagles standpoint for the last 10 years you don't like Melbourne well I think the whole from the 2008 thing with the Jack Watts thing and the Nan Nui thing we're both being poor Gary Lyon taking pots at us (laughs) pots (laughs) our clear pots Pots and ceramics (laughs) sneak into our club and taking a bloody fine china (laughs) not on Gary (laughs) but but since then I think there's been a bit of a rivalry and uh, they were hyped up hard and the media we joined Big Footy about 10 years ago, which is when the Eagles and Melbourne were both the yeah. worst two teams. And then there was that big Jack Watts thread. If anyone on here um, was on Big Footy around then, you'll know what we're talking big, about. Yeah. You um, know, it's just pretty feisty. One of Mary's stuff. One of Mary, yeah. <laughs> Jara, I think, was better than that. Nui, big, yeah. yeah. God. But, um, yeah, so I think, you know, it, oh, it's just that and the whole media and is a fairy tale and they wanted just to mm. put Melbourne supporters over in Melbourne up on the big screen. So yeah, it's just true. a bit of... Yeah, it's yeah. just a massive up yours to the AFL. And it was <laughs> fantastic they're not kicking a goal in the first half. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, that's true. Um, for me, like, obvious highlight is the grand final. Um, this cat is so annoying. Um, like 30 not out. That's, this, if anyone's watching this... He's got a higher score than Aaron Finch in this series. Wait, what? I was saying it's like the cat. 30 not out. <laughs> yeah, uh, if anyone's watching this and wondering why we're doing the podcast here today, Bush is at Rottnest. And the reason we don't ever do the podcast at my house is there are three annoying cats. Mm. Um, so ignore them if you hear them. I'm just going to just edit them out and just bleep them out. Um, okay. A uh, highlight for me was obviously the grand final. It wasn't the most enjoyable game to watch. My head was uh, in my hands for most of the day. Yeah. Because I wasn't too negative, but like you're just tense, right? Well, yeah, I don't think I said a word. Yeah. Normally when I'm like, we're losing, I'm whingy, but I was just dead silent this whole game. And I, I had the faith, but... I just couldn't really speak until Dom Shee kicked the goal and then I just burst into absolute tears. Yeah. And it wasn't because I was nervous. I think with the, Sh- the Shee goal, even when I didn't know how long was left, I think I knew we were going to win. Yeah. It was just that, it was just joy for yeah. me. It's pure, yeah, Kim kicking that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're very lucky as Eagles fans, but this is going to get real deep right now. But I think very, we're very lucky as sport fans because I, I tell people about the grand final who don't really like footy and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I think like... The good thing about sport is that you can have, it can give you that like moment of just pure euphoria yeah. that only MDMA gives you. <laughs> but, no, but that. like if you if you just like if you don't like sport and you like um, I don't know reading, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a shot at people, still, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like if, I can't read. If somebody so. <laughs> if somebody has pretty mild hobbies, like they're never going to have this thing that gives them that pure ecstasy. Yeah, and we're very lucky as Eagles fans. I've had it twice in my life. Yes. Um, Obviously, 06, we won by a point where mm-hmm. it was just both extremely dramatic grand finals yep. as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that was one of the highlights. That was one of the best moments of my life, that dumb sheet mm. goal. And yeah. then, um, but I think the most enjoyable game for me, as you said, was the Melbourne game, the prelim. Yeah. Because we just smashed the hell out of them. Yeah. And it was just pure, it was just like a party all day. Everyone was <laughs> yeah. absolutely stoked. There was no fear of really losing. But unlike other beltings, you don't lose interest because... The, you, the win is going to the grand final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember in the third quarter when um, when some Melbourne player like Spargo or something like that was having a shot for goal and um, 
or harms, and uh, the crowd was going MCG, yes. MCG, yes. and that that other than the grand final itself, that was one of my favourite yeah. football memories. Uh, ever. Yeah, I love that. I remember um, uh, as at the game, uh, the North Melbourne uh, game, twenty fifteen, and the MCG chant there. It's just, yeah, there's not much better. It's just everyone in the crowd, and you think all these people are then going to go travel over as like, yeah. support to Melbourne. It's just like it, it's. Yeah. It's incredible being an interstate supporter going over to Melbourne. True. It yeah. really is fantastic. Well, you and I did the hard trip in 2015. We drove yep. over um, <laughs> yeah. to watch the Eagles get annihilated by yeah. Hawthorne. And then to both be there in 2018 was pretty special. It was very special, yeah. I think that, as you said, with sport, I mean, you, it's good. You go through highs and lows. And I think that's the fantastic thing, being a supporter. And that's the fantastic thing about sport because, I mean, we're not playing, obviously. But you support the team through the lows and there's actual build-up. Mm. To the like, even Richmond supporters were going forty years or whatever it was for a premiership. That's like, where else do you get that that feeling? If you've been supporting a team, you're putting effort and emotion into this game for so long, mm. into this spectacle, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's the the pinnacle. Yeah, is there and it wins. I mean, that's incredible. Do you know and, why? I, sorry, if you finish. I was going to say that's why, like, um, sport and like gladiators and things like that. It's been a just watching people's performance mm. is is been so popular for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, true, true. It's uh, incredible. Do you know why I think I prefer AFL... Well, one of the many reasons I prefer AFL to cricket, but cricket doesn't really have that pinnacle... You That's know what true. I mean? It, yeah. Obviously, there's the Ashes, yep. and then there's big series, and then you have World the Cricket Cup, World Cup, yep. but, I mean, who gets excited about that until it starts, and then you're like, it's over, and it's... I don't know. Yeah, maybe, it's, it's maybe, cricket. Yeah. maybe that's an ignorant comment. Maybe there's a lot of people who care about it, but it's not really the same as it is in soccer. I completely agree. Um, yeah. But in in cricket, you have a lot of these filler series that just mean nothing. Yeah. And, you know, even this series against India, this is... It is a big series, but it's, it's probably the biggest we've had in a while. Uh, South Africa was pretty big, too. But, I mean, like, if we lose it, we just go back to it's being pretty, a, a middle-of-the-road team and yeah, it's like... Yeah. We'll try it. We'll, yeah, talk Until the next everyone. series. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right, though. Exactly. There's no, like... Yeah. Co- there's no build-up to this one moment, you know yep. what I mean? Um, which I think is a beautiful thing about fo- um, footy, and that's what mm. cricket lacks. It's interesting that the EPL, because the EPL doesn't have the finals series. The A-League True. does. The A-League has, you finish on top or whatever, and then mm. you, it's just, well, not luck of the jaw, but whoever you play in the final. So mm. I wonder if Australians, are, you know, obviously Australians are more accustomed to that kind of thing. If they just had yeah. the A-League and whoever finished the top wins, we'd probably be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the buddy? Where is the yeah. pinnacle to get to? True, true. Yeah. yeah. I think the Big Bash really does work well because you do have that build up. It's a season and there's an end. Yeah, very true. Um, so th- I think that's why the Big Bash partly has engaged me so much other than the fact that, it, that you know, the stand is pretty good as well. But mm. um, Yeah, good yeah. point. Uh, yeah. I think maybe cricket is, uh, I mean, it's a pretty upper class thing I mean especially in the UK I think I think yeah. it's not, especially when you can't watch it unless you have pay per view kind of thing true um, I just think it's such yeah here I feel like it's quite kind of... a bogan sport though like maybe not maybe not yeah. not as much as other sports but I feel like it's a li- lot more non-discriminatory between who likes cricket definitely yeah you, okay maybe not like it's not everyone's thing but yeah. like you can there will still be plenty of bogans yeah. who like it yeah, exactly it's not just yeah you can sit around in drinking wine and having a cheese plate or something. Yeah, it's not really like that here. Yeah. Um, well, they do that in Melbourne home games. <laughs> <laughs> don't they say? Yeah. But it's not you know sitting at Lords and whatever. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's 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 interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think rugby is considered a quite a upper class sport in in the UK as well. Yeah. Whereas in it's, here, yeah. it's it's like what state you're from. Yeah, it's like yeah, domestic violence beating up your. <laughs> well, wow. come on, it's true. It's what happens. Yeah. Like, they, okay. it... <laughs> <laughs> They're harsher. And, yeah. No, nah, well, I don't know. <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah, but you know, it's very yeah. meatheads. Mm. Whereas yeah. I think rugby fans would probably say we're the druggies, the AFL, maybe. Well, Mel Storm got done for drugs, didn't they? And then yeah. um, a pain PR something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm yeah, just I don't know. We rugby. don't know anything about rugby. Let's no, not that's not <laughs> true rugby podcast. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I write that. The thing, um, cricket's just maybe a bit too slow, and as you said, doesn't mm. have the real. Yeah, there's just a lot of pointless series. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Just, it just feels futile. Yep. Um, but. At the risk of rambling, low light for 2018. I'm going to say, don't have to labour on it, but Andrew Gaff's hit on Brayshaw was probably one of my lowest points as an Eagles fan. Right. Yeah, okay. I think that actually hurt me more than losing the grand final in 2015. Probably because probably we got belted in the grand final. Yeah. Like, if we lost that by a point, maybe not. Yeah, that's but, true. But the Gaff thing for me was just, it felt kind of like season over, and then, yeah, which was but obviously we, bullshit. But um, Where are we going to go from here kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was hard for me to take, especially because like, 
like I see the Eagles players is like almost not really family like that's cringy but it's like a cousin you're quite fond of yeah does I know. something it's, stupid it's, like, I mean that, oh. that's the same attitude that people have now like with the Australian cricket team where they, mm. they're cheating like oh you, I can't believe you did that yeah <laughs> what about Steve Smith <laughs> which one's he again <laughs> which one I honestly think that's like uh, it's like you know like at a Christmas reunion you're like oh yeah Uncle Jimmy's back in jail you're like oh. <laughs> I can't relate really to that too real <laughs> <laughs> too real <laughs> Oh, um, do you have other low light other than that? The gaff hit. No, no, he's doing his knee. That's oh yeah, that's the obvious low light. one. I that guess was I really forgot upset. to say. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's really. I mean, the guy's a good bloke and bloody well. As far as you know, who knows? Yeah, find out. <laughs> Rolf House is a good bloke. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so <laughs> like. <laughs> Anyway. Edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Ke- anyway, no we yeah. have the Kevin Spacey stuff. Here. We yeah, can leave that yeah, yeah. Well, Kevin Spacey is a good um, actor. But um, yeah, so Nando doing knee, second knee. After, it's it's mm. sad for the bloke, and he's and Doherty's just done the same thing. Yeah, it? exactly. That's another. I mean, that was that's yeah, it's still this year. Mm. I'll, I'll pay that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, injuries to injuries to anyone is yeah. pretty basic. I don't want to wish that upon any of the players. Alex Johnson was another one. Oh, he too. He yeah. played one game back and did it again, didn't he? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Poor bastard. Yeah. But. Nano doing his knee, his other knee, or same knee, other knee, other knee. Yeah, very very sad moment for him in the club. And Adam Simpson was obviously crying and things like mm. that after the game as well. So it means a lot to a lot of players, mm. and probably the NFL in general. To be honest, he's a much loved player. And, True, and he's yeah, that was probably a low light. Um, I did also include what else did I include? Um, from a Fremantle point of view, them I, I, this would be in my highlight. <laughs> them losing by one hundred thirty three points. Around 22 mm. Geelong. Yeah. That's a bloody low line for That's them. That's the lowest point of their career, actually. Yeah. Have their, wow. Yeah, their life in terms of that. 23 consecutive goals they conceded after leading at quarter time. Yeah. I don't, I'm not um, doing this that mean to have a crack, but that's... I mean, that In terms of line. where they... Because Fremantle are a much better team than that. Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah. Geelong are not that good. They, no. They were a middle and of the road so team. So it's, it's a pride thing. You would, mm. don't want to see a team get 20... What? 23 consecutive goals? Yeah, 23 consecutive goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Actually, highlight. Well, I've got this. Had this in between. So so far, we've just talked about the Eagles, and then uh, my other low light was Fremantle got held to fire. We're sorry if you're listening. Yeah, I'd say. I got. Well, I've got Buddy kicking eight as a highlight slash low light. I mean, oh, first game one. in the first game in the new stadium. I was like, "Buddy, this place is amazing." Yeah, it's gonna be. It was a great game, mm. and then Buddy just comes in and just pisses all over it basically yeah. <laughs> and kicks out which is fa- I mean it's fantastic viewing he yeah. was everywhere yeah, it was he just was. just kicking anywhere near him he was kicking goals from everywhere it was fantastic to watch him he's one of the best key forwards in the game I'm, in round one as well I didn't really think we were a premiership contender so I was m- much more tolerant mm. of us getting pants by absolute great yeah yeah definitely um, I don't know what do we think many big highlights from I mean Collingwood getting where they are is a massive highlight yeah for them. Nathan Buckley yeah well, I think we'll probably come back to that yeah a bit later yeah uh, well, actually, no, I was going to say biggest surprise no, team we'll of the year. come back to it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> biggest surprise team of the year. So you reckon Collingwood? I think that's fair. It has to be Collingwood, doesn't it? I think it? Joycey had him second last. I like said had Collingwood bottom two right. in his prediction. Shows um, how much we know about yeah. the <laughs> You should watch the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, no, nah, to be fair, like we've all had howls, and, and I think no one had Collingwood in their top eight out of any of us. So yep. um, that wasn't a dig at Joycey. But uh, it seems like there's been people, especially Eddie would have had a lot of faith in someone mm. like Buckley and that's True. been rewarded. Um, yeah. And some of their list management, I questioned, I even made a video about it like 12 months ago and I thought, why are they loading up on players mm. when they don't have the talent? Yeah. Um, like loading up on top-up players, like but how and, evidently yeah. like, they it's five weird. points yeah. off the flag. So. It's kind of weird. Like the, the Jeremy Howe, Chris Main, mm. well, the Buckley did try and throw him under a bus at one point. Mm. Literally. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I mean you've seen teams like Port Adelaide and that kind of thing also try it and do that but mm. Collingwood I mean yeah it actually worked for them in a sense they, these big players actually played big parts yeah. in their push and it was kind of a redemption story for Nathan Buckley really Jeremy yeah. Howe's a massive like turnaround for me I mean he was always kind of a right forward but yeah, but never would have playing... picked all Australian defender yeah players. exactly yeah incredible and Chris yeah. Mayne had it almost a, I think at Norm Smith he would be. He was le- almost leading my Norm Smith at halftime, mm, um, mm. especially quarter time. He was everywhere. Yeah, basically playing a defensive forward role in McGovern. 
And that yeah. was pretty sad seeing him like bawling his eyes out after the grand final. Cause... Yeah, sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, yeah. Uh, now he I'm... doesn't play for free. I'm bloody I mean, I've watched the grand final like 50 times, as you can imagine. So like, I, I see something different every time. But he, that guy's what, like 31, 32, Chris Moon? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. He's travelled around, yeah, from one club, what? spent half, most of his life at one club, gets a grand Lost final. Lost the grand final lose, close there. Yeah. Comes yeah. across, for, plays his heart out in buddy um, VFL to get yeah. another... Just find the team and then loses again. And they led for like 100 minutes. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, bastard. But no, yeah. definitely, I mean, that's the surprise of the year. Mm. Definitely. I was going to say North. I agree Colin was a bigger surprise, but North is my other nomination. Just made a video on them on the channel mm-hmm. uh, for a team that massively surpassed all really? expectations. Well, okay. they finished bottom four the previous year. Mm-hmm. And then we were, uh, I think they beat Hawthorne early this year. They smashed West Coast in Hobart. Um, that's true the year. they did finish ninth, but there was a big glut of teams they were finished between like period. what 6th yeah. and 12th or whatever it was um, and Northwood arguably as good as Geelong and that at maybe times. not but yeah so, at times yeah. at times yeah. that's fair definitely um, so they're my nomination for a big positive surprise right. what about a negative surprise Adelaide yeah Adelaide you'd have to go Adelaide yeah um, that, that year was a year from hell I think mm. for them mm. uh, 2018 with all the uh, was it concert? Was it concentrated collective minds? I think concentration. It was concentration. Oh wow! You're, you're into- collective minds camps. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're save. doing lots of good save concentrating. Yeah, but I mean, with all that kind of shit, and then players wanting to leave, or rumors that players wanting to leave throughout the year, Mitch McGowan then leaving. I mean, mm. talk about Taylor Walker texting. I oh, know it was a horrible year, and then what they finished twelfth, I think thirteenth. Yeah, twelfth, I think. Yeah. Uh, after playing in the grand final the year before, I mean, it's. Ooh, a lot of that was injury, to be fair to them. That, I mean, that's I true. Mean, but not I, all of it. But. I think there's a lot. Their pride was destroyed. I think their faith in themselves and their faith in their mm. own team mm. and other teammates was just shot. So yeah, that's that's a low light. I don't know if it was particularly surprising. I mean, lots of interstate teams haven't had fantastic years the next year true. after losing a grand final. True. Um, but Do you think that's an interstate thing? Or? That's true. I think it's any But it is an observation. I remember Port West Coast... Yeah, um, I mean, but Hawthorne two thousand eight didn't make the finals in two thousand nine. Yeah, um, that's one. But they won in a way. They, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, wait. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, we were talking. I think we were talking about like teams that got belted yeah, in the yeah, final yeah. don't do well the next year. That, that is true. I mean, it must be like so close yet so far, kind of. Yeah, like you set put all this effort into this year, and, then and it's hard to pick that up again. Yeah, and, and the confidence you'd lose from be- getting belted yeah, in the MCG. Definitely. Um, yeah, I feel sorry for those the LA supporters anyway. Mm, definitely. Mm. But uh, do you rate their ability to climb back into contention next year, or do you think it's going to be a while yet? I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know. They, I mean, they have the talent there. I mean, they're going to the grand final, didn't they? They've got a good home ground advantage. It did lose Mitch McGovern, but I'm not sure how important he is to him really structurally. In the end of the day, mm. um, uh, I don't. I don't know. I think they'll be top eight, top six, maybe. I think. I would consider that a success, top six. I think that'd be a success for him. Yeah. Success. The other down, um, sorry, surprisingly bad team for me was St. Kilda. I think they finished, was it ninth last year? Yeah. I think it was ninth. And uh, a lot of... I think we had some faith in them. Well, yeah, I, I certainly did. Um, I quite like a lot of their young guys like Hunter Clark That's and we Blake Aiden and stuff. That, like yeah. I feel like there's so much potential there. They just haven't got it together yet. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a lack of top end talent, you'd say. Yeah. Because they lost really well at Montagna. Who's their best player? It's Jack Steven and Seb Ross come to mind. Yeah, um, Jack But they probably just like that elite player. And to, to be fair, they are trying very hard to sign an elite player. Yeah, they, that's they've true. Tried they've that, tried incredibly They've hard. thrown the, the, um, the book at you know, so many different players. But uh, therein lies the uh, slight disadvantage they have against other big Melbourne clubs of securing players. Um, it's interesting. This, I yeah, to me, they just don't scream big name club. Even uh, Well, they're like facilities, I think, are very average for a start. Uh, they're okay. like... So it's hard to level. actually interest people to... Yeah, I mean, you take a tour there and then you take a tour at Collingwood. Like, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, Chalk and cheese. I do like the Saints, though. Um, yeah. I, I, I think they're just that was a disappointing year for them. Um, I don't know yeah. if everyone will agree with that. And the other one was Gold Coast, um, purely because we sang, were saying 12 months ago they had retention issues and then they just lost Stephen May, Tom yeah. Lynch, Aaron Hall. They're both their cap- yeah, the yeah. co-captains and both just bug it off. I mean, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Cod Dash, he left, I think. Yeah, he well. left, yep, yep. Uh, Scrimshaw. I mean, yeah, poor bastards. Mm. True. Um, yep, very true. Um, so, 
enough of AFL 2018. What about you on a personal level, Lewis? How was <laughs> how was your 2018? Speak to me. Speak to you. Tell me. No. Yeah, I really you, you did have a big year personally. Though. I did have a big year. Um, it was a it was very well. What a year, honestly. <laughs> honestly. You you've um, actually repeated what I did in 06. In 06, I went to the FIFA World Cup and went to, saw the Eagles win the grand final. Yeah, of course. And then you did the same thing in 2018. Went to Russia. Yeah. And um and you obviously made it for the grand final. Mm. Tell us about your trip first. Whereabouts did you go? Because, like, it, it seemed like one minute you were in, like, Islamabad, and then the next week you were doing crystal meth on the beach with a <laughs> Buddhist monk in Lithuania. Like, well, we'll talk about this. Uh, it, it took me three or four days, but he wasn't a... He wasn't a, he wasn't a monk. <laughs> Pretty sure he was a cop. Yeah. <laughs> he was deep under cover. Yeah. No, that, um, that part wasn't true. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't. I figured out um, that I went in the end, went from Perth all the way around the world west to Melbourne, which wow. is pretty pretty True. crazy. So, because um, you you went from where, where were you when you went to the grand final? Because you was it Scotland? I was in Glasgow. Yeah. Yep. So so that was some yep. like four months after you had left Perth, right? Well, I left Perth in early April. Yeah. Well, what's, what's that? So yeah, probably, yeah. probably about five five months. Yeah, five yeah. months I think. Five and and so. Yeah, and I was honestly very close to signing a lease to live there. And really? then the Eagles won that game. <laughs> and so I was just like, lease wow. here. And I had the flights here. And I thought, wow. I didn't know options. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I could, I could move then. But instead I went, bug it. I'm going to spend 50 hours wow. traveling from Glasgow across. Without across a ticket continent. to the grand final. Without a ticket to the grand final, yeah. Tell, us, tell the people how you got your grand final No, ticket. I don't think I, don't think I can we- talk too much about it. Oh really? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But no, my friend, you friend won and it, I though. won it. We won it in a yeah. So we flew in. I flew in probably on a Wednesday. I think maybe it was Thursday. I don't know. I left. Yeah. I left on like Monday and got there about Thursday. Yeah. Because uh, I went across west from Glasgow to Melbourne. <laughs> Horrible. Via Kazakhstan. Via Kazakhstan and yeah, <laughs> Jeddah. <laughs> What's the plan? <laughs> What's the planet from Star Wars? <laughs> Naboo. Naboo. <laughs> oh, Tatooine. Yeah. Tatooine. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I went after all that journey, get to Melbourne, no ticket, I think about the Thursday afternoon, and sponsored ad for Mars Bar saying they're putting out a competition the next day, the Friday afternoon, at uh, the hiding Mars Bars around Melbourne, and they're hiding tickets with them. And so they had a 3 p.m. draw, 4 p.m. and a 5 p.m. draw. And a guy so, came up to you and was like, they're somewhere on my body. <laughs> and they weren't on his body. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> After that, that was after about fifteen minutes. We figured out that was a fake. Wasn't a Mars. It wasn't. That wasn't a Mars. <laughs> it was just a chocolate log. But anyway, so we're in the city. Three o'clock. Ones in Carlton Gardens are saying miles away. Second one, we think, oh, buddy, it's got to be somewhere close to the Yarra. And so we hang around there. Miss that one as well. Gets found about forty-five seconds. And then the third one is oh, I don't know my Melbourne, but it's neck basically across from the um, modern art gallery. And so this is about five o'clock. It's their final chance. Other than this, no one anywhere is selling them on Gumtree. I mean, no one, I mean, not even for extortionate prices. People aren't even selling for like two grand. People want to go to this game. And we look on the, look on the bloody thing um, as soon as it comes up. And it's literally in those gardens about, we can see, we can almost see the bloke. And so we basically sprint down there and just get in time before these other boats get in. It was absolutely, man, it was a party after that. And with the two... Flip and freeze Mars bars, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Which you valued almost as much. Yeah, as yeah. Well. bloody hell. Jeez. It was fantastic. So that was elation. And um, I feel sorry for the other people that won the Mars, but uh, won the game, uh, the tickets because they sat next to us at the game. They're Collingwood kind of supporters and there's small children there. And a few times I got quite over animated <laughs> during going. the game. <laughs> and the court case is <laughs> it's in Melbourne, so I'm leaving again. Yeah. This season. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so it's a pretty, pretty you might fun not story. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greg, um, Greg will be on the show. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> not um, yeah, wow. That, that's pretty crazy. Huge. Like, most yeah. people would be angry. I remember your reaction after you won the tickets. You were like, this is bullshit. I didn't even try that hard to win these tickets. <laughs> and you, like, you just flew it. I just flew it, yeah. I mean, it was three very long journeys, a very long layover times. It was honestly a 50 hour journey to get there and 50 hours to get back. Although, think, yeah. Think about how. 
like hard it was to get to Melbourne in 2015 by your van. Yeah, we were driving. How much harder you tried in, or how much further you travelled in 2018 without a match ticket. Yeah, that's true. Isn't that kind of bizarre? Yes. I don't think I would have ever done that. It's It was bizarre, and but I think... I mean, it paid off, fortunately. I mean, it's very close to not paying off, but I was... And you had riding, better seats than I did. I had, yeah, I was yeah. riding the 50 metre mark in the buddy left forward pocket, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, railway side, yeah. Yeah, opposite the side of the dumb sheet, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was, pff, the best tickets I've probably ever sat at a football game. Mm. So, it... Oh, With un- this dumb sheet goal, did you... From where you were sitting, did you see it go in? No, I I saw the crowd go up behind, yeah. behind him, up, but remember... I think Liam Ryan hit the post earlier yes. that quarter and they went up then and so I was like oh, true. I was I was so a bit unsure. McAvenny. Oh really? McAvenny goes went up. That's why he's, or something like that. He said something like that and that's oh that's why Lewis Jenner was got around him or something like ridiculous. Oh yeah, like, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a point, yeah. And yeah. but everyone went up and so yeah. I, was, I was like up and then I was like, oh, gosh, yeah. shit. But then he kicked that goal and then everyone kind of realized like it's kinda of happened in a anti clockwise motion. People behind the goals realised people were slowly yeah. up around realised they got to us uh, and it's like a Mexican way basically. Yeah. Like, oh god, that's nuts. Incredible, yeah. I was um like straight up the other end, so I couldn't see the angle at all. Uh-huh. And I was just watching the crowd and I was recording it and for people who've watched my vlog you'll see. I've got the camera loosely on Dom Shed, my hands are shaking. <laughs> I'm not watching the camera, I'm watching him. And then yeah, you just you barely see the ball go through the goals, the crowd goes up and I go, Blah! Oh, and the camera god. is just like going everywhere. <laughs> And then it goes to the silence because I've just burst into tears. <laughs> I'm not, I oh, can't make it. I get absolute this. goosebumps thinking about that now. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Thinking about that moment. It's fantastic. I was hugging everyone, everyone I could see next to me. Poor yeah. Collingwood supporters. No, they'd left by that point. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when the siren went, I I had to wait until the song started playing, which felt like a long time. On the footage, you watch it and it's straight yeah. away. But it felt like a 10 second block before I heard the song. Yeah. Play, and I was like, are we actually in front? Did that yeah. really happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you just... you. Because you don't have the commentators to tell you the score. Well, you know the score, but like, you, I don't know. You're just looking for more visual cues, like to make yeah. sure it was real. At least I was. I was just in absolute disbelief. But yeah, um, I know. and then when the Eagle Rock played and you dropped your Dax and did that dance around the yeah, stage, yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> that was, you did have a lap to the song. Yeah, before, yeah. <laughs> best ten grand I've ever spent in fines. <laughs> um, Another court case. So we're yeah. probably not back next. Can't year. comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So it's an eight month journey in tow, and that. That was probably the highlight. Mm. That I, I mm. spent a lot of time in that. China, Russia, that kind of yeah. beautiful. As, yeah, some big, big travel journey. <laughs> big, big travel journey and some big events went to this year. So. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Great, yeah. great year for me. My year was interesting too. Yeah? No, not really. Oh, Do you want me to ask it? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I, can't, tell me about it. I can't compete with that. I, um, I just got a message from Joyce. Apparently, Mish March hit a six. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's the highlight. <laughs> lifts his average win one shot. Um, <laughs> no, what I was doing all year was uh, doing this YouTube channel actually. Which one? Um, <laughs> I have a few. <laughs> no, actually, actually most of them set to private. I have like nine different YouTube channels, like of different embarrassing videos of me across the internet um, that thankfully nobody can find because my name's not on them. But um, <laughs> they exist. They exist. Yes. Um, no, but it's been a big year for this channel. Certainly. Um, yeah. From where we've come, what, 1650 subscribers? That's incredible. This isn't morning, it? I think. Man. And, uh, like, yeah, I just remember how bad we were when we started. I think the first one was good, and then we had technical issues all over the. the yeah, month, we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. We literally no idea what we were doing. Yeah. Um, Still don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, I'm hoping this this works. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. But, yeah, pretty much. No, that. You've done fantastic. Honestly, you've probably oh, run this thing. Well, I've I've been away and Busher and Joyce have been in and out, but oh, so to speak. So to speak, yeah. How'd you know about that? Case? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it together. It's, it's been a good team effort. Um, we've had some good podcasts. I think the highlight for me uh, was probably making that Eagles documentary because mm. um, that went down really well, and like we got like a thousand subscribers in like three months. Yeah. And then obviously the, the low light was when that got taken down two weeks later <laughs> and we got a copyright strike, um, which I'm sure sure many people will know what I'm talking about listening mm. to this. Um, and I also think the other low, low light was probably our last podcast. The draft one? Mm. Yeah. That there was some mean comments on I'd, that. I think I'd been back for about 12 hours at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea who anyone was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, look, that's fair. I, I, mean, I think the format was the worst part of that. To be honest. Yeah. Because 
we just went through every club trying to talk about who um, who they drafted and like give like a 10 second summation of a player. Yeah. I think we'll just do it ne- differently next time. Yeah, it's def- definitely, it's a difficult format to talk about the draft. You really want to go into mm. um, teams. Mm. Um, and I'm a lot more nerdy about it than some of the other guys in the group. Definitely. You know what I mean? I've been, I follow it a lot more extensively, so it's hard for me to just talk about a player for like 30 seconds and be like... And then- all right, next yeah, time. Yeah, exists, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> nah, so yes, I think uh, just next year we'll do it differently. But I think other than that, we've generally been... We've had some really good episodes. Um, yeah, really fun episodes as remember well. Remember the Footy Conspiracies one? That was a good one. That was, that was a lot of a fun. Year ago. Oh, that was, yeah, um, and that's still current. People can watch that because it's... Mm. Yeah, you get the hint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Subtle. Yeah. Um, no, no, I think no. highlights just even... Just creating this thing and giving us being able just to talk. Literally just talk mm. about sport and whatever. And I didn't expect... Big thing. I expected... Didn't expect like 1,600 people to watch any of it, like yeah. videos in total. Well, some of our podcasts have 10,000 views. That's incredible. Yeah. It? I mean, the average 13 seconds of watching. As soon as it switches <laughs> and cuts to Bush, it's just like off. But, I mean... That's how... I was, was going to come up with a joke. 13 seconds average time is... is how long <laughs> Your it Bush takes is off. Yeah. <laughs> so Bush. Uh, but you're not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, just... Oh, it's incredibly fun, isn't it? Just mm. being to talk about sport. I can't, I can't believe we started it. This is actually... like. It, I think it was Joyce's idea more than mine, to be fair. Okay. But I think he floated the idea, and uh, I was a big fan of True Geordie podcast, and uh, we kind of just like Ripped made up a the name. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Someone commented that once. They were like, "You've basically just taken the True Geordie podcast, changed the name, and made it, like made it about football." And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that was to it. be fair, that's like the only thing I still stole from True, True yeah, Geordie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was it? What's the expression? Like imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So, um, there we go. Yeah. Um, if you're watching True Geordie. Yeah, so we had some. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> what are we doing? Oh no, no, jo- <laughs> Josie. Yeah, why are we? Now, Josie came up with the podcast idea, and um, it just seems quite out of my character. I'm quite actually an introverted person, mm-hmm. um, but now it just it just feels so sort of natural. Yeah, to just to talk and just to put it put ourselves up and online. Yeah, <laughs> I still get nervous every time we start a podcast. Oh like, yeah, seriously, heart palpitations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> serious heart palpitations. <laughs> Uh, but it's good fun. Um, so, I mean, we're just still looking for a sponsor. I think that's going to be the next step for us. Yep. Um, so, if you know anyone that wants some branding mm. and advertising on the podcast, um, yep. truefootypodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hopefully, we have some merchandise out yeah, there yeah, soon. Yeah. yeah. Mainly Bush, Bush's face. Big yeah. Bush's face and like little stubby holders and... Bushwhacked. Bushwhacked. Yes, yeah, bushwhacked. There's a lovely car, like stickers, bumper stickers. Yeah. Look out for those. That's that's probably that would be with the low light of the channel. <laughs> seeing Bush's nips, yeah, very. That's in my notes. <laughs> and we have a Patreon as well. Do you, do you oh. know what Patreon is? Mm. I made a Patreon. I don't think a lot of people do, but it's basically like it's a um, it's a website where people can basically sponsor you uh-huh. um, or support you. It's 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 considered a membership, so people are paying you and you can give them based on what they pay they give like different levels of perks and stuff right um we can't offer anything at the moment so basically (laughs) i've just made a page where you can offer us one dollar a month um to help us going basically we just need to save for more equipment that's what yes yeah yeah. yeah. we i like i don't i want to make money out of this thing not because i want to make more salary but i just want to be able to do this more days a week and not have a nine to five permanently like it would be nice to really get the quality of these Things up. Things. Hey, shut up, man. <laughs> okay, next year, just, yeah. once we make money, it's just all four is going to be replaced. <laughs> it's going to be four different people. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing I want to do next year, I've been talking about since literally the first podcast, is have mm. a guest on. Yep. But I've been nervous about having a guest with the amount of technical issues we used to have. Mm. And now I'm just being at worse. Um, yeah. But I guess I have a few guests in mind, but. Um, yeah, I probably just need to man up and get them get on podcast. Get them on. Because yeah. I haven't really interviewed someone. Like we're pretty friendly people. We are very friendly guys. Mm. On camera. On camera, off camera. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and we could talk about junk for whatever. So if mm. anyone, yeah. True, true. Definitely. So yeah, hopefully we'll do that in 2019. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's predictions. Yeah, let's, podcast should we predictions? talk about some predictions about next year? Yeah. AFL 2019. Um, let's do it. Premiership. Who do you reckon? Well, who's, uh, give oh, us a grand final and a premiership. Oh, you mean premiership? Yeah, yeah. Like, who, who's the grand final? Who's going to win it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> doing much. Doing much. Well, I've got 
I got in my notes here. Um, okay, I can read my writing. Uh, I've got my t- Collingwood and Richmond. I yeah. think it's probably. I mean, that's a pretty yeah. standard. Like that's. I mean, those would have improved. to be the two favourites. I think yeah. at this point, really. I mean, Richmond did kind of drop. They get smashed by Collingwood, but at the end, I think they just won the premiership. They weren't really hungry enough to mm. go for it again this year, even though they finished on top by about eight points. I think it was yeah. like six points. Um, and Collingwood, obviously, they've. I think as big improvers this year and they've now added Dane Beams of course and I think with a bit more confidence in themselves I think they have good good home ground advantage as well mm. I think that that's my bet yeah. that's where my money would be that's and... exactly what I put <laughs> okay Collingwood Richmond <laughs> on my head um, the Eagles don't tend to go well two years in a row yeah they usually I have don't, a gap. can't see there's, I mean there's motivation to go back is for mm. Nan Nui and Gaff I guess and yeah. Shepard but the rest of the 19 players or whatever have already won a premiership so it yeah that's true uh, that's true mm. um, so we do know though that mm. whatever predicted grand final we have it'll be completely different yep. like who would have picked Collingwood West Coast who would have picked Adelaide Richmond who would have picked Bulldogs Sydney yes, the last true. three years yep. so I feel like we have to put a nominate like nominate a wild card um, grand final Okay. so pick two teams that you think are a good chance but you don't necessarily think we'll make it, and then that is more likely than Collingwood. And yeah. Richmond, okay. Oh, I mean, I'm terrible predictions, as you can totally tell from last year's. Yeah, we all are. Year. We all are. But I don't think I've ever predicted a premier, other than maybe Hawthorne during their three peak. I don't think no, I've ever yes. correctly predicted the premier that year. Right. Okay. I don't think it's, many people. Uh, would yeah, have. I mean, it's pretty hard. I mean, you don't hear. Yeah. You yeah. never hear stories of people picking the premier. I mean. I bet, like, you know, oh, I put 50 bucks on mm. whatever they win. They usually just bet on their own team. Yeah, and just out of Yeah, then confidence. you hear about it when it pays off. Yeah. Like Leicester City. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Melbourne, let's go with Melbourne then. Ooh. I think, I mean... <sighs> they got pretty close. They did get, they one, got one pretty win. close. Yeah. They did get pretty close. And I think they, have a, they do have a good squad. Um, I, I Just in my mind, they I just feel they're... They've got a next step to get up to. And yeah, I'm just going to say Melbourne. <laughs> and then uh, Hawthorne, I think it was. I think it was Hawthorne and Melbourne. Hawthorne. I was, yeah. yeah, which is, you know, a bit another kind of safe ish, mm. but um, it's not too interesting. It's not like a buddy St. Kilda going to come up from nowhere. Like, kind of guess, which is, you know, saying bullshit like that will yeah, happen. Yeah. But I mean, they've added, they had uh, Wingard, of course, and Tom Scully. I don't know, it's who knows if he actually make a difference or not, but. And they're obviously a very proud club. So I think they can... They they finish top four? Yep. Yeah, they finish top four. A little bit of yeah. fortune in that, in my personal Definitely. opinion. I think there was yeah. a fixture that was a little bit beneficial. Beneficial, yeah. Definitely. But look, that's just a wild card. Sure. And for you, I'm sure it's going to be Geelong Essendon. <laughs> <laughs> I was really tempted to put Geelong, eh? Geelong are my roughie for the premiership. But... um. Which I'll elaborate in a second. No, I can't shake the feeling Hawthorne, North Melbourne for some reason. Ooh. Because like, I know it sounds ridiculous and I pretty much, I think I'll have them like seventh and eighth if you ask me to do a ladder. But I just got this weird feeling it's going to be two clubs you would never expect. Okay. Collingwood, West Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people had them both missing finals. North Melbourne. Big call, right? Because it's hard to see who their elite midfielders are. Yeah. But, um... Ben Brown would have to go absolutely just mental. The back line's good. Forward line and back line is good. It's kind of like West Coast where 12 months ago, like the forwards yeah, and backs are good. That's true. But the um, the midfield the is probably where um, they probably don't have that elite talent. But yep. yeah, they might have some pieces together now. Like Zeeble, like Cunnington, Pollock. That's good. That's a good guess. Yeah. And that's, so that was your wild card, was it? Yeah, what do you reckon? Card. What's your safe bet? That was Collingwood Richmond. I like you, so yeah. I yeah. think you said that. What about Brownlow? <laughs> oh, gee, that's one thing I don't think I'd even... I've got like Rising Star here. I didn't even think of the Brownlow. Um, actually... Taylor Adams. Wow, that's a yeah. big call. There we go. Putting it out there. Did he get a lot of votes this year? I can't even remember. I just, I don't yeah, know, I just right. feel it. It's yeah. my sixth sense. He did have a very big grand final. He had a very big grand final. He had a big, yeah. pretty, sure a pretty big final series. And he's, mm. he's a pretty noticeable player. Um, I reckon he's just going to really take it to the next step next year. I think, cool. I think, especially if Collingwood are winning games, which I think they will, and win, um, win well... I think he's going to get. He's going to be a big part of that and win a lot of votes. I mean, there's there's a lot of engine room in Collingwood. You got Chalor, um, side bomb. him side bomb Penelope. as well. Yeah, yeah Penelope. But Beams now. 
beams. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Can I change my? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he's he is serious quality. He's mm. a serious serious quality Taylor Adams. Um, and yeah, I rate. I think he's. I think it's gonna be a bit of a surprise. Taylor Adams. Really. Cool. I'm gonna go a little bit left field. If Tom Mitchell doesn't win it, I'm gonna say Pat Tripps, Josh Kelly, Ty. Oh, Ty. Yeah. I feel that like those be... two are the next emerging elite. I was gonna say that's very um, yeah. Kelly needs to get on the park torch. because. He's going to have... Le- no, Shield's gone now as well, so there's a little bit less help in the midfield, which sure. probably could help. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, when he's in form, he gets, like, 40 possessions, and yeah. he's so damaging. That's um, true. And Cripps is there already in t- an ability, but I think he just needs to be in a team that wins more than two games a year. Yeah. Which I think is possible. Hmm. That's that's a roughly that one, because if, Col- yeah. if Carlton win less than four games, then I'll be doubting it. But he still yep. did poll pretty well for a two-win season, I think, Cripps. I think he did okay. He yeah, did okay, yeah. yeah. But two wins. Yeah, so. two, yeah. yeah, two wins. Yeah, okay. I like that. Um, Very interesting stuff. Quick bolters and sliders. Who do you think is going to rise up the ranks? And who's, who's going to slide? Um, oh, do I say free man? I don't know. <laughs> As a bolter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think. I mean, they did, lo- they did lose Lockie Neal, so they lost mm. a bit of midfield uh, power there. Mm. But I mean, they did add some actual key forwards this year. Two. And yeah. I mean, they, they can't, their pride can't, Go. I mean, they just can't deal with another year of those performances. I mean, they, mm. something's got to change. I'm thinking this year. If it doesn't, Ross Lyons has to go, obviously. But um, it, yeah, I think I think they will bolt. I think they'll be. Oh, maybe for bolt from their position, which I think they might get six or seven. Yeah, that would be a good year. Yeah. Sliding. Oh, I don't know. It's that's a doozy, isn't it? I, yeah. No, I honestly. These predictions will make an ass out it's, of us if we predict yeah. the slide. It's just hard because like the whole area from like six to I don't know, probably twelve, that kind of region, mm. they're all teams with a kind of similar, similar yeah, yeah, so yeah. bolting and sliding, I don't know, yeah, I can see true. Geelong dropping out, but mm. that wouldn't be so much of a big surprise. Mm. But I think the, the top four, you know, I couldn't see West Coast oh actually I could say West Coast do a slider. I, I don't. Ooh, I mean, it's the I reckon, sliding for first. There's, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Slider, so right? yeah, so, I'm gonna say West Coast first down to about fifth or sixth. Okay. So yeah. Fremantle up, West Coast down. Fuck you. Um, oh, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Still, I'm gonna say Geelong, third or fourth. Okay. On the ladder, I think they're not done with yet. Yep. Um, had some bad injury luck. So much talent in that injury room, and my slider will probably be Sydney. Um, it's just hard to yeah. pick them to say them it a slider. Is, it hey. is hard. It's, 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 it's they were just <laughs> very unconvincing lately in the last couple of years. Wish, wishy washy, hey. Mm. I mean, to get to, they played some great games against us. Um, had some great games throughout the year, and then they just got barreled out, didn't they? they got barreled out. They beat West Coast twice. Yeah, they're thrown into a barrel. And yeah, GWS rolled out. Beat them by like seventy points or something, sixty points in the finals. Um, Strange. They're a proud team as well. I don't know. They're. I just. For years and years, like a decade, I've been like, ah, Sydney. They're yeah. not going to make the eight. And they finish like third. And just like, yeah. How's it sound? What about a predicted headline from 2019? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can be as raunchy or conservative as you want. Does that have to be football related? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you do one uh, of each. Give us one football related one. <laughs> Jeez, that's, that's hard. Um, five flips of fan as fringe flops <laughs> Could I? is that on the spot that was yeah, yeah that was just <laughs> we should act like that was not pre-prepared um it's funny that we both went to five i'm gonna say it's just it's so five good. gets suspended again costing him his third brown or like a potential so... flop. is that no it would be like if you consider the prettiest one was cost because of suspension because mm-hmm. five lost by a vote and then um, this year he probably would have won it yeah. had he been not missed so yeah. much with injury and stuff and then uh, obviously he's won one and I think next year he'll get a one week suspension <laughs> and he'll have the most votes and, uh, and lose wow. to Cripps and Kelly yeah, that's a good one yeah it's a little stanky um, how about um, actually I don't really have anything else these no that's cool I think the Flips <laughs> are fan while flopsing it flops out was what was it? Something about, <laughs> something about flopping out. So it's fringe flopping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fringe. Oh. Um, all right. What about rising star? Because you're such a draft expert. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Where's Bush? I so I can throw some names out. Um. Well, I think I put two names down. 
Jordan Clark, I thought. Ooh. I just thought it was... Um, I think he could actually play for Geelong and play well. I think he might probably fit into their team and their and their lineup mm-hmm. and actually play some games yep. and get the ball as well if they put him in a um, halfback flank kind of mode. I mean, I guess Rising Stars, it does seem uh, players that kick goals, I guess, but I think... I don't know. I just have a lot of confidence. Nice. And they can get the ball. And then the other one was like... Um, Isaac or Rankin mate yeah yeah because he will play mm. yeah he, he will play. yeah and he'll kick goals he's a forward um, so yeah and he's, he's going to be got one of Gold Coast best forwards <laughs> yeah already he actually is he's, he's pretty good. yeah from his highlights it's like he's pretty I'm going to yeah. say sexy looking player yeah in the game. what about his ability yeah his ability like, wow yeah. well, that's to be seen <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't concentrating <laughs> what are um, the other one I actually had Rankin and Clark as well I think Clark will finish high but not win it yeah, um, the other fair. issue with him is um He's got glandular fever, so oh, right. if he doesn't recover from that for like six months, then yeah. yeah. But but no, it's a good nomination in terms of ability. And he'll play straight away, like you say. Um, the other one, I reckon Bailey Smith for the Bulldogs, just because yeah, he's a bit of an yeah. exciting, sort of That's like true. contested, yeah. explosive midfielder. Um, so while these types don't always do well in their first year, because like if you rely on a contested game, it's very hard to mm. do well. But he's got speed and, and he stands out and he's got that ripping mullet, so... <laughs> Um, I reckon he'll be a bit of a cult Mullets. hero. So yeah, Mullets, man, they, they cannot come back into fashion. I know it's gone. Ben Strand did shave his though. Mm. Now he looks like Scott Pendlebury. I've seen a couple of good ones. I reckon there's no good ones, man. <laughs> there's no good Mullets. Why do we want to go back to the seventies and eighties? Oh, the eighties. Why do yeah. anyone want to go back like Pete John Farnham? I no, could, that should not. I could see you with a mullet. Really oh, I could right see it. it. I could do it. <laughs> it's a haircut got, but just, just shave that. Or yeah, all down the side there. <sighs> It would be disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even go there. Some people get them ironic. Well, actually, I presume all of them are ironic, but yeah. I don't know. I've seen some pretty, oh, some Bumby ones. Some yeah. rat tails come back into yeah, bloody yeah, fashion as well. I'm sure. just thinking, this is... Filthy. Filthy? Yeah. It's not even ironic. It's just filthy. An ironic mullet is... <laughs> that's so Melbourne, isn't it? <laughs> so Melbourne. Yeah. Um, okay. As we finish off the podcast... Because it's been a long one, actually. I think yep. we intended for a bit of half an hour. <laughs> um, top three players in the AFL. This is a question from Bruce, one of our Discord members. Bruce. And I'm just going to have a look just to see if anyone... That was your one. wallpaper. Is that you and your uncle? My mum. Fuck. <laughs> 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 I didn't Why? even see I it, to be honest. <laughs> Why would it look specifically like an uncle? <laughs> um, thoughts on other sports? Okay, sorry. Right, keep, keep going. Um... So Uncle, Jimmy. Wait, Uncle Jimmy's in jail again. <laughs> top three, yeah. Top three players in the AFL. Five. Uh, yep. Man. Um. Hmm. Well, we turn just three favorite players or three best. No, three best, I think. I reckon Buddy Franklin again. Ooh. I yeah, mean, he's he's it's pretty standard. I mean, it's hard to. You know, I don't think he'll poll particularly well on the brown low, but I think. Well, he does for a forward, considering how few yeah. votes forwards get. True. Just kicks stupid amount of goals, does he? He's just ah oh, that when he against Josh Kenny, Josh Kenny's gone was his third Coleman in a row, second third Coleman in a row thing. He kicked like ten against Flip and Carlton. Yeah, I know. He just pulls out whenever he wants, does he? It's like oh, flip it. I'll just <laughs> what that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, but he's just he's a beast, isn't he? Yeah. Once he retires, it's going to be talking. This is how people have talked about Wayne Carey. Yeah, I, I, I think he could have surpassed him. I think people are already making comparisons about whether he surpassed right. him. Um, and I think it's a fair call. I definitely think he is uh, a better player overall than someone like Kennedy. But I always thought Kennedy was unheralded a little bit in the Victorian think, media. Yeah. For, for a guy who won back-to-back Commons, missed mm. five games in his third consecutive... like the Yeah, he still almost won it. Yeah, yeah. he like pinged his he ankle. For, yeah. Um, he's incredible. Like, he's not as good as Franklin over the stretch, but... I think Kennedy's he's, he's not as naturally talented, I mm. think, as, as Kenny. No one near... No, no, no sorry. Franklin. As Franklin. Yeah, yeah. He's not as naturally t- talented as in he won't sprint down the wing and play kick him on his left from yeah. 50. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's just bloody good at... Fo- he's a bloody good footballer. Yeah, yeah. He's not as naturally talented, but he's a bloody good footballer. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. It's um, yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, funnily enough, I said Dusty and Fife and Buddy. Um, and the other one is Dangerfield, I feel like... Um, could be that number three uh, if he gets his shit together. Kind of had an off year. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like he... All those three players, Dusty, Danger and Fife, are kind of being pushed into the forward line as well a little bit more. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of hurting their individual games. 
That's true. Um, maybe not so much Fife this year. He probably will. But in the past, he's been a forward. Dane just yeah. played quite heavily forward. Mine and Dusty well. like, yeah. was nowhere near his best this year. Very so. true. Do you have any like surprise best players? If you know, like the kind of bolters. Again, I, I was talking about Taylor Adams. I thought he's mm. going to be really pushed up into the upper echelon. Luke, I mean, Luke Shuey... I noticed a lot of people writing Shuey suddenly top 10 now. Yeah, is that um, right? Which because is funny. I don't know how far I agree with interesting. that. interesting. But... When people were trash not people well I remember Mark Robinson was trashing him again when we in 2016 mm. trashing him leadership credentials and how poor he was and things mm. and people came out like Lockie Neal and a few other players I think Pendery came on Twitter defending him said he Stewie's a great player he's the only one trying to drag us across the line so he's obviously rated pretty highly within mm. in AFL circles yeah, but yeah. again it's just the, he's yeah he's Victorian as well which is interesting yeah right? yeah that's true that's so, true but I don't think again he had a pretty good year he's a lot of missed with injury, but mm. I don't think he will. I don't think he's, flat, he's flashy enough. Maybe I'm not sure to be in the Should real we? top three. I mean, you're not going to go. I think he's very, right Oh, yeah, maybe not as fast. That's what I mean. Yeah, so. yeah, no, he's, no, no, he's not. He's not burst on the. I mean, he, he, I know he's a bit burst in the pack like Dangerfield, but he just mm. doesn't have that aura about him, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. He's not a contested beast. Like, he's he's a good, sure. strong, contested player, yeah. but he's not like. He's only one he's, he, he's definitely the best kick out of all those players yeah, by he's, far. He's one of the he's best kicks in the West Coast. He's a midfielder in the Absolute West Coast. Legend, Hall of Famer, by yeah. far he is. Yeah. Um, um, how, about, how about anyone else? I don't really have any bolters as such, but I do think Tom Mitchell is one of my surprise think, sliders yeah. in the fact that I barely rate him top 10. Yeah, I think he got lucky last year with it. Um, I mean, but Fife almost, he got pretty close and Fife played bugger all the year. Yeah. I think Shuey's a better footballer than Mitchell. Mm. I think... 100%. Dane Beams is a much better footballer. Yep. I think Sidebottom's a better footballer. Oh yeah, Sidebottom uh, by far. No disrespect to Mitchell. I, it's it's like it's like what you say about the Test cricketers. It's Same not about, their yeah. fault. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's a Matt Prittis. Yeah, I think that's it? a good comparison actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moves around the ground a lot better than Prittis, but yeah, just does. a lot of his like ball movement is just so it's very sideways, sideways defensive yeah. half. Um, I very, just yeah. I don't know. I don't particularly have a lot of. Um, Time, not time, but like I don't really get excited about pure inside mids. Yep. Um, so it's someone like a Lockie Neal, Tom Mitchell, Prittis. Yeah. Not it's, really my yeah. cup of tea. It's okay if they're huge and they're like contested beasts. Like I yeah. really like Joe Botson, Fife, and yeah, like um, Zebo, Cunnington, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, like I don't know. So that's probably my omission. Oh, yeah. I don't know about yeah. the top there. I thought Gaff was getting there this year, but kind of wrecked it. Yeah, I wonder how they'll rate him next mm. couple of seasons. Mm. He still made it all Australian. True. Yeah. He did have a fantastic season. So. Mm. Um, yeah. Last Bont- question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to have Bont and Pelly coming back into it. What are your views on him? Yeah. I, like, I love him, but um, another player who plays forward, forward a lot. A lot. So yeah, um, it hurts his game, I think. I could um, come back strong this year. Yeah. I think Western Bulldogs had well, down down two years. I think mm. they might still not be fantastic, but I think he's going to come back in. But they seem to be getting actually. younger. The dogs, like they, they're yeah. drafting a lot, which makes me think they might take a bit longer. I don't know. I do, I really like them. I think it's Bond Peg West. Is he, wait, who's the captain of the Bulldogs? Is it Bond? Maybe. Is it worth checking out quickly? Oh, God. Because I think it's another Tom Lonergan thing. <laughs> which boy find it? This. Because I think it's. Wait, he's still wasn't it? Ah, is he not still captain? Yeah, so. Yeah, he is captain, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. I'm not. So, the point is that Bond Pelly might take a more of a senior leadership role. He's still mm. pretty young, but seeing a mm. leadership role in that team and really drag Bulldogs across the line a few games or yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. I think he's got strong possibility. He's McRae as well. He's a pretty good player. So. Uh, anyway, your final yeah, questions. Yeah, final or? question from Bruce. What's your favourite alcoholic beverage? What's your go-to? Ooh. Um, Cosmopolitan's. Little Umbrella. Actually. <laughs> well, they're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, jeez, I pretty much I just like? get the standard like pine pond. Oh, I'll get it. I'll literally no shame asking what the cheapest beer they have. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no shame at all. Um, I'm if, getting much more partial to red wine these days, though. Oh, big fan. I think since yeah, I like, yeah. turned 25. Since I turned 25, I've um drank red wine a lot mm. and went to an Andre Royal concert. Yeah, I didn't. Wasn't my choice, but it were happened. You, were you drinking red wine at the Andre? No, Royal I didn't concert? actually. Ah, oh, that would have no. been just peak. Like no. Yeah, it makes me sleepy. <laughs> Red wine's good though. You get the Hardy's, you get this Hardy's stuff. There's like 33% more wine in your bottle for like five bucks. It's like a litre of red wine and it will ruin your afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about if you want to treat yourself though? You're treating yourself. I do, I do love whiskey actually. 
Uh, yeah, have you seen that? There's a big thing now. That fireball bloody whiskey. It's like cinnamon, cinnamon oh. whiskey. It's delicious, but oh, like really? it's becoming like a bit of fireball and Red Bull kind of thing yeah. combination. Yeah. It's like delicious, but that's yeah, that sounds awful. The spice rum's pretty good. I'm a big fan of mm. spice rum. Yeah, colds and stuff like that. Mm. Thanks for that, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he also said, "What about potato salad? Do you have olives with it?" First of oh, all, man. olives are disgusting. I keep meeting people that say olives are disgusting and they're probably my favourite food. <laughs> I've got like in my fridge like a jar this I don't know a jar like a plastic tub this big like it's designed for bulk it's designed for like a restaurant and I just like dig in there with my hands and just eat them like they're nothing. I love them so much. You still talking about olives? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> what else could that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... They are amazing. Mm. On pizza, 100%. It's a part, potato salad, that's a bit odd though. I'm going to Bruce, that's bizarre. <laughs> Weird question, is that that's, what you mean? No, just olives oh. in potato oh. salad. <laughs> okay. We wanted to go with like the calamatas. I mean, cal- oh, I could go calamari, but they're a bit too flavorful. I reckon. Mm. Maybe like a green olive, the ones that stuff that um, pimento, I think they're stuffed with. I'm Those are the ones I can eat by the kilo. But you know, yeah, anytime I really have potato salad is when it's like a family sort of buffet kind of mm. thing where it's like all serve yourself and I just load up the plate with meat. <laughs> Just to get a yeah, but lettuce. how about the food? Yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> Just load up my plate with my meat. <laughs> Six feet of meat. <laughs> Don't Google that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I oh, know, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of potato salad. But olives, in that, Bruce, you're a sick individual. And <laughs> I'm calling the police. I'm going to get a warrant for your IP address. Check you down. A warrant. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've done a good run. That was a very long podcast. I hope people are still listening. Because it's actually been a lot of fun. It's actually been a lot of fun talking. Yeah, that it was, it was a good one today. Um, happy New Year. Yep, you too. Uh, oh, I think he also asked, how was your Christmas? <laughs> oh, it's shocking. It was, Don't bring it up yeah. again. <laughs> no, it was, it was fine. It was Thanks, good. Bruce. Yeah, hope Bloody you... cold. Not even barely summer. Here, isn't it, really? It's not warm. Oh, it was probably hot on Christmas Day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like to take okay, I trust you on that one. <laughs> Christmas um, is good. Yeah, cool. Thanks, everyone. I hope you had a Merry Christmas to all our listeners and have a wonderful New Year. Um, see you next time.